Hello everybody. How many of you believe that God will bless your future? Raise your hand. Amen. How many of you believe that five years from now you will be better people? Amen. How many of you believe that five years from now the dreams that you have in your heart will be fulfilled by the power and the blessing of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to turn to that person beside you. Give that person a big hug. Tell that person you look good. <laughs> Oh, you do. You do. Every time we gather as a feast, I want you to increase and keep on increasing your capacity to receive blessings. Everybody say that, capacity. capacity. Say the word increase. increase. You need to learn to increase your capacity to receive blessings because many people go to the feast and, and they come here with a cup, you know, and at the end, and, and they fill this with, with, with blessings. And at the end of the feast, they go home with a cup of blessings. You got me? And, and there are people, they come with a, they come with a pail, and, and much bigger. And, and they go home from the feast with a pail full of blessings. And there are people, they come with a drum, and, and they go before the Lord, Lord, fill me up. And they fill their lives with with a drum, and they go home with a drum filled with blessings. Amen? I've, I've got a word for you, and this is my word. God says in Scripture that blessings go and come down like rain. Rain comes down to the good and the bad alike. For every human being, God has the same amount of blessings. To every human being, He gives you and you and you and you and you the same blessings. But many times we leave the blessings on the table. We go, we go and, we leave and, and we leave behind blessings because our capacity to receive blessings is small. We need to increase it. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you one thing. Throw away the cup. Throw away the pail. And while you're at it, throw away the drum. I want you to come before the Lord every time we gather here at the feast with a swimming pool. With a giant size swimming pool. As big as the Pacific Ocean. And I want you to say, Lord God, I want all your blessings. Say that with me. I want all your blessings. Because it's not for me alone anyway. Amen. It's something that you want to share to others. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Thank you, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that even as we go through our trials and we go through our discouragement, there are times, Lord, when we feel we're all alone. There are times, Lord, when we feel we're pressured by life. Lord, we had, some of us here, we had a rough week. But Lord, we thank God that we come to this place filled with faith and we are filled with hope. And yes, Lord, we want all your blessings. We want to increase our capacity to receive blessings because we want to bless your people. We want to be a blessing to others. We want to be a walking blessing. We want to walk every day blessing people. And so we say yes to you. We say yes to your plan for our life. We say yes to your dream for our life. We say yes to what you want to do. We say yes to your abundance. We say yes to you and your miracles and your healing and your blessing in our lives. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to your blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I, I am God's servant and God's powerful champion and because I am blessed, I will bless the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we do ask you that you speak to us. 
Turn your scripture to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. And if you have a highlighter or a pen, underline it because this is a key verse for your life. And it says together, I assure you that whoever tells this hill to get up and throw itself in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Say that with me, it will be done for him. For this reason, I tell you, when you pray and ask for something, believe that you have received it. Can you, can you hold the hand of the person beside you? Tell that person, believe that you have already received it. Sabihin mo sa Tagalog, natanggap mo na. Hallelujah. And you will be given whatever you ask for. That's what the word says. And you will be given what you ask for. So Mark 11 is about belief. Mark 11 is about prayer. Mark 11 is about faith. But you know what? That's incomplete. We need something else. And we find that in John chapter 5. Are you ready? John chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. This is a story. After this, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a religious festival. Near the sheep gate in Jerusalem, there is a pool with five porches. In Hebrew, it's called Bethsaida. A large crowd of sick people were lying. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. A man was there who had been sick for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there. And he knew that the man had been sick for such a long time. So he asked him, Do you want to get well? The sick man answered, Sir, I don't have anyone here to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up while I'm trying to get in. Somebody else gets there first. Jesus said to him, together, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. One more time. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man got up, picked up his mat, and started walking. Hallelujah. You know what's the missing thing? Ask me what? In Mark 11, it was about faith. Mark 11 was about belief. In Mark 11, it was about prayer. In John chapter 5, it's about action. Everybody say action. This talk is so powerful. And you should be here. You know why? Because many times, we want miracles to happen in our lives. We want prayers to be answered. We want God to bless us. Amen? Amen. And all we do is have faith. All we do is believe. We do not act. Jesus said to the lame man, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. What do you call that? Action. Amen? Amen. Tell someone beside you, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. You've got to act. Everybody say act. Do you want miracles in your life? Do you want abundance in your life? You've got to act. And I'm going to teach you now how to act. You've got to act as if. One more time. Act as if. This is beyond positive thinking. This is beyond uh, 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 affirmation. This is beyond visualization. This is beyond imagination. This is action. Act as if. And you will see more miracles happen in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Place both hands over your chest. Let's pray together. Jesus, fill my life. I'm increasing my capacity to receive blessing. I want all your blessings. Thank you, Father. Brothers and sisters, many times we do not receive the blessing of God. Our capacity to receive is so small. Sometimes because we have distorted thinking. Sometimes we think we don't deserve the blessing. Sometimes we think that God does not bless. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we've gone through such a rough life, a terrible life, and, and, and we think as though, you know, we, we won't be able to go beyond that. Brothers and sisters, you know, we need to heal that, but there's something else. We need to act to increase the capacity that we have to receive those blessings. And so say this after me, Jesus, I choose to act in Jesus' name. I will receive all that you want to give to me. Amen.
Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. How many of you brought a photo or an object of what you want to happen five years from now? How many of you dressed up? And, and, and you, raise your hand, raise your hand. Just want to see a raise of hands. Hallelujah. Amen. You look wonderful. You do. Tell someone beside you, you look wonderful. Can I begin with a joke? There was this guy who goes to a friend and he says, you know what, I don't feel well. Why? Oh, I eat like a bird. I work like a horse. And I'm tired as a dog. There's something wrong with me. And the friend says, oh, you bet there's something wrong with you. Why don't you go to a veterinarian and find out? <laughs> Raise your hand if you agree with me. How you feel affects how you act. Raise your hand if you agree. How you feel affects how you act. If this morning I came with feelings of sadness, this is how I would have acted. Hello. Good morning. I hope you'll be blessed. I'm not sure, but maybe. Feelings affect action, right? Now, if I was happy, I'd say, Hi, everybody, how are you? You know, it affects my inflection of voice. It affects my movements. It aff I have a smile on my face, right? I'll say it again. How you feel affects how you act, right? But don't you know that the opposite is true? How you act affects how you feel. One more time. How you act affects how you feel. That is the message that God wants to give to you today. Jesus told the man, the paralyzed man, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Act as if. You are well, you are strong, there is strength in your limbs that you are healed. Act as if Jesus didn't carry the guy. Oh, you poor guy, 38 years? Oh, no, where's your mat? Oh, my gosh, come. Jesus said, act as if. You want blessing? Yes. You want miracles? Yes. You want healing? Yes. Act as if. I'll give you uh, an illustration. There was this experiment made by some group of psycholo crazy psychologists. They got this group of people and, and they asked them to bite a pencil between their teeth. Do you know that after five minutes, they asked the, the people who had this pencil between their teeth and they, they reported that they were happier after five minutes. Happier. You know why? No, they were not giving candy. No, they were not asked to watch a nice movie or comedy. No! Just put a pencil between their teeth. And they said they were happy. You know why? Because the, the, the positioning of the pencil forces the mouth to contour like a smile. It shapes the lip like a smile. Right? And so after five minutes... Now, now I'm, I'm going to give you an experiment, okay? I, now, of course, I, I'm not telling you, like, tomorrow you go to the office with, <laughs> with a pencil between your lips, okay? Hi, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Why do you have a pencil in your lips? Oh, I rather what all that, what the pencil in my lady to go, now you can let go. No, well, what, what I want you to do is to understand that how you act affects how you feel. In fact, let's have an experiment here. For my whole talk, I want you to just smile. Just, just smile the whole talk, 30 minutes, you know, 25 minutes. Now, if you're tired already, then put your two fingers right here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm joking, I'm not joking, I'm just, 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 just you know, I, I guarantee you, you're going to feel better after this talk. Now, because how you act affects how you feel. And, and I'll, you know, do you know that this happens a lot in your life? You don't even feel it, you're not even aware of it, it happens a lot. There's this case of this woman. 
she, she went to her husband, I want a pet. No way. I want a puppy. No way, the husband says. And the wife says, please, please, please. I want a little puppy. A little cuddle. You know, I want to walk and feed and, you know, care. No, no, no. About three years, the wife told the husband, please, I want a little puppy. And so the husband says, okay, on one condition. You take care of the puppy. You feed the puppy. You walk the puppy. I will not have anything to do with the puppy. The wife says, okay, 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 thank you. They buy a puppy. Now, there are days when the wife is not there. And the dog is, you know, barking, hungry. So the husband feeds the puppy. There are days when the wife is not there to walk the dog. And the little dog just wants, you know, scratching the door. And, want, and so the husband says, okay, okay, okay. You know? There are days when the dog, you know, the wife is not there. So the dog goes near the ankle and the foot and the leg of the, of the guy. And the, oh, okay, okay, okay. After about three, four, five months, the wife notices something. Every time they're in the mall, the husband says, oh, look, a pet store, come. Is, do you have a, you have a collar, dog collar? Good. Oh, nice dish. You think we should buy this for the dog? You know, after a while, after about a year, you know, the husband is, you know, loves the dog, you know, takes care of the dog, you know, it's my turn to walk the dog. You know? What happened? What happened? How you act affects how you feel, right? Now, do you know, maybe you don't, but do you know that how you act affects how you feel? Act as if is the basis for all the moral teachings of the world. In all world religions, the Jews have the Ten Commandments, the Buddhists have the, the, the Four Truths and the Eightfold Path, and the, the Muslims have their Five Pillars. All of them are based on act as if. None of them say this. Wait for your feelings of love. Wait. Once you have the feelings of love, then love. Do they say that? Did you hear your priest say that? Did you hear your religion teachers say that? Did you read the Bible say that? Wait for feelings of obedience. I feel obedient today. Okay, obey. Right? Wrong. What does the Bible say? You act. I don't care what you feel. Love. Obey. Tell the truth. You got me? Action and then feelings. You got what I'm saying? Okay. Let's make this clear. Clearer. How many of you are working in a job? Raise your hand. You have a job, 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 job. Okay. How many of you want to be promoted? How many of you want to become the vice president? Okay. If you're stuck in a job, act as if you're already promoted. Tell someone beside you, I'm already promoted. And act as if you're already promoted. This is how it works. You know, we're, we're doing this act as if, come as you will be in 2014, where, where, where all of us are, some of us are dressed, some of us brought objects and photos. And, you know, I got this idea from Jack Canefield. And I've been doing it in my, my, my little groups. It's the first time we're doing it as a big group. And he, he shares this wonderful, wonderful story. He said that in his bank, where he goes, there are three tellers. Two of them... They're dressed, you know, with ordinary shirts. The third one is dressed with a tie and a suit. And he notices something. One year later, the guy with the tie and the suit, they gave him a desk. And he became no longer a teller. He was appointed as a loans processor. A year later, he becomes the loans officer. A year later, he becomes the branch manager. And so... Jack Canfield asked this guy, and this guy said, you know, when I began in the bank, I already knew that I will one day become a branch manager. So what I did was I looked at my branch manager, and I said, how does he dress up? I will dress up the way he dresses up. How does he act? You know, smart, confident, that's how I will act. You know, how does he think? That's how I will think. And he comes 30 minutes, 15 minutes before time, that's what I'll do as well. And so, here's the thing. He acted as if he were the branch manager long before 
he became a branch manager. You got what I'm saying? You want to be promoted? Act as if. Okay? If you, for example, are the messenger, the messenger of the office, tomorrow I want you to go to work with the Barong Tagalog. <laughs> you know? And of course, they will say, what are you wearing? And you say, sir, I just want to be presentable that when I go to that office or that office, the security guard will, will salute me instead of asking me for my ID. I will, he'll go, he'll, I'll, I'll just go in with, a, with my package. And then, you know, all the secretaries will say, hi, sir, uh, what, what do you want, sir? I'm just delivering this package for my company, you know? And, 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 and all, all the, you know, they, they, will, they will say, my gosh, you're the messenger? Yes, I am. <laughs> and, and, they will, and, and you'll tell your boss, you know, sir, because of me and because how I will dress up, everyone will say, my gosh, you know that company? They pay their messengers well. <laughs> he, they, they, their uniform is a barong Tagalog, you know? Now, guess what happens? In three months' time, you know, everyone in your office, the managers especially, will be talking about themselves. You know our messenger? He's wearing barong Tagalog. He's really good. You know what? I think we should promote him. <laughs> Act as if you are already promoted. How many of you want to become a multimillionaire? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you really wanted to. <laughs> okay. Uh, act as if you're already a multimillionaire. Act as if. No, I did not say spend as if. <laughs> That's not my point. You will be like this guy who goes to his neighbor and says, Neighbor, uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can you lend me five kilos of rice and three cans of sardines? When my wife comes from the U.S., we'll pay for it. <laughs> sure, sure. When, when's your wife coming home? Oh, she hasn't left. We're still applying for a <laughs> U.S. visa. <laughs> Okay, where well, I, I did not say spend like a multimillionaire, but act like one, believe that you're one, think like one, plan like one, strategize like one, dress up like one, you know, walk like one, you have dreams in your life and, and think like, you got what I'm saying? This is the secret of Gawad Kalinga. Gawad Kalinga is this, is this whole outreach that goes to a slum area. You know, if you go to a slum area, you see this. You see dirt, dirty houses, you see uh, open canals, you see garbage all over the place. It's dark, it's dreary, it's depressing. And then Gawad Kalinga comes in, empowers the people, gets volunteers, and all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, the houses are colorful and beautiful. You know? And what, what, what happens? I'll, I'll tell you what happens. Tony Moloto says this to me. He says, the poor person wakes up in his own beautiful house, opens his eyes, gets the shock of his life. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is my house. That's right. This is my house. I'm gonna, I have to get used to this. It's so beautiful. It's colorful. You know, and he fills his life with color. What does he change? He changed his acting as if. You got what I'm saying? Okay. How many of you want to be a loving person? You want that? Act as if. In Tagalog, magkunwari ka. I'm not kidding. Brother Bo, isn't that hypocrisy? Isn't that being plastic? No. If you really want to be a loving person, but you're not yet a loving person, that's okay. Act as if you were a loving person. A hypocrisy is you don't like to be a loving person, but, but, but you act as if you're a loving person to get something from the other person, you know, to manipulate. No, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about you. You want to be a loving person. You're not yet a loving person, but you act as if you are. You got me? You, you want to be uh, Mimi Silbert. We talked about her already in the Delancey Street Foundation. She would get Criminals, remember her story? She would get psychopaths, hardened criminals, 85% are heroin addicts, 500 of them in their building. She would welcome them. Her goal in life is this, not to change their beliefs, not to change their feelings, not to, not to give them guilt. You know what? Those criminals, she would tell you, Mimi Silbert will tell you, when they go in the Delancey Street Foundation, none of them, none of them would have any guilt whatsoever, any remorse whatsoever for what they did in the past. They killed 10 people, 20 people. They raped 300 women. 
It doesn't bother them. They don't have any guilt. And so what Mimi Silbert does, you see, these guys and these women, they don't care for anyone else except themselves. They have been diagnosed to be psychopaths. And so Mimi Silbert's goal is not to change their belief. It's not to change their, their, their feelings. It's not to change their... No, it's simply to do one thing. She'll tell them, act as if you care for the others around you. Just act as if. And then she would change their clothes. And she will give them middle-class jobs in their businesses. She will, she will change the externals. And she will tell them, act as if. It changes lives. It absolutely changes lives. Do, do, do you have a temper problem? Are you stuck with a temper problem? You want to be patient? You want, you want that? I want you to imagine and I want you to act as if you are the most patient person in the world. I want you to t t tell, tell someone, I'm, I'm, I'm so patient. I, I am the most patient person in the world. And act as if. Tell someone beside you, magkunwari ka. Because, because what's going to happen, what's going to happen is, you want to be a loving husband? Act as if you are a great loving husband. You want to be a loving wife? Act as if you are a loving wife. You want to be a great father, a great mother? Act as if. What will a great father do to his kids? That's what you do. Act as if. Because if you keep on doing it, can keep on doing it, and keep on doing it, sooner or later, you won't be acting anymore. You got me? Single people, raise your hand. Single people who want to get married, raise your hand. Okay. I, here, here it is. Single people who want to get married, but they don't have a relationship yet, raise your hand. Okay. Here it is. Act as if you already have the, your one true love. Your, 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 your love of your life. Why? Because desperation will get out of your system. Because I want you to know that guys and girls, they can smell desperation a mile away and run away. So let's, let's seep it out of your system and begin to enjoy life. Begin to enjoy life and be confident with life. Live your life and you will be more, much, much more attractive. Amen? Am I making sense? Yes. When, when you act as if, you know, let's say, let's say you've got a problem with pornography. I had a problem with pornography. I acted as if I was so totally well that I could not even imagine myself getting into it again. In other words, nagkunwari ako. Because that's not the truth. I still had these urges, but I, I acted as if. I, 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 you know, me do that again? Who never. No way. I acted, and I acted as if, and acted as if, and acted as if. There came a point, I was no longer acting. I really can't imagine myself doing that anymore. You got what I'm saying? You want to be successful in life? Yes. You've got to learn this. This is so powerful. And it's all over the Word of God. Act as if. There are three things that happen when you act as if. Number one, you focus on your dreams. When you focus on your dreams, what happens is you've got this filter in your brain. Everybody say filter. It's called the RAS, or the Reticular Activating System. You know, thanks be to God, you've got a filter. Thanks be to God, you've got an RAS. Ask me why. Because every moment of your life, you're bombarded by a tidal wave of stimuli. Sights and sounds and textures and colors bombard your senses. You should be insane by now. The reason why you're not insane is because you've got this filter, this reticular activating system, this RAS in your brain that will filter what sensory detail stimuli you are to receive not this 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 this you only accept a few now when you focus on your dream what happens is your filter your reticular activating system 
is able to pick up from the environment the resources that you need to fulfill your dreams. Yes? Now, now here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me give you an example of, of what I mean by RAS. When, when my wife was pregnant, we were walking in the mall, and then she told me, Bo, there are so many pregnant women in the mall. And I laughed, because is it true that there are more pregnant women that time than the other times? No. What happened? Her RAS picked up on the many pregnant women because it was important to her because she was pregnant. So the RAS picks up what is important from your environment. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now the same thing, if you've got a dream and you act as if the dream is already being fulfilled, one of the things that happened to me years ago was when I wanted to become an entrepreneur, I, I just said, you know, there's no business opportunity, there's no way to earn money, there, you know, there, you know I, I could not see opportunities. Maybe once a year I'll see a business opportunity. Today, because I act as if I'm a millionaire, I'm a multi-millionaire, I'm acting as if I'm a brilliant entrepreneur. I, I say that every morning, by the way. I'm a brilliant entrepreneur. I'm a brilliant entrepreneur, and I act as if. Guess what happens? Today, I see a business opportunity once a day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. I see it. I don't get into it. I just say I see it, and then I choose the very best. And, and this year, I'll start four small businesses. That's my goal. I'm, 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 I'm working on the first one. I'm working on the second one. And I know I'll have two more down this year. Why? Because did my world change all of a sudden? Did my world change that there's so many business opportunities now than before? What changed? Not my world. Me. I changed. My thinking changed. Amen? The second thing that happens when you act as if it's very simple. You, you create a new normal. Everybody say normal. What is normal for you? Is impatience normal for you? Boy, I'm an impatient person. Every day I get angry. I shout at my kids every day. That's normal for you. Create a new normal. Act as if you're, you're the most patient person in the world and you, you never shout at your kids unless there's fire. That's your new normal. Okay? Create. Here, here's the law of the normal standard. The law of normal standard says that your mind will only accept that which is normal to you. So create a new normal. Am I making sense? Finally, oh, by the way, I've been sharing this to you that visualization and imagination is powerful. Olympic athletes use this all the time. Their coaches tell them, let's say you're an, you're an Olympic runner, every morning, the coach will tell you, imagine, visualize. You're in the starting block. Imagine the gun exploding. Imagine, visualize, running at top speed, the wind on your face. You hear the roar of the crowd. Imagine you reaching the finish line first. Imagine the tape hitting your chest. Imagine standing on the platform with a gold medal around your neck. Imagine, visualize. Friends, it's powerful. But what we're teaching you now is 10 times more powerful because we're beyond visualization. We're beyond. We're going to the next level. We're not just positive thinking. We're not, we're not that. We're now in action. It's imagination that's acted out. Are you getting what I'm saying? And finally, when you act as if, what happens is that it diminishes doubt and strengthens. Strengthens what? Your belief. Here's my dream. In 2014, my dream is that we will have a community center and a simple one where we can worship the Lord and serve God together. I don't know where this will be. But, but I just know one thing. It will be a place where people will be blessed. It's a place where their minds will be changed. It's a place where families will be reunited. It will be a place where poor people will learn financial skills and literacy so that they can increase their abundance. It will be a place where God will be worshipped and God will be victorious.
Will you dream with me? Yes. Hallelujah. I'll end my talk with an illustration. When I got married 10 years ago, the romantic within me wanted to put candles all over my house. You know those movies that you watch, there's candles on the floor and candles on the table and candles on the shelf. I made my own candles, believe me. I, I, I made the candles and I put the candles there. You know what happened during our romantic dinner? I couldn't breathe because our apartment, our rented apartment was so small. But anyway, these are my wonderful friends and they're going to, they're going to, whoa, this is, now this is a mold and my dear friend here is going to pour hot wax in the mold. So a candle is being made right in front of your eyes. Wow. Wow. And here's the finished product. Okay. I thought we are going to wait for 20 minutes. There it is. There it is. Let's give them a big hand. That's wonderful. So beautiful. My gosh. That's wonderful. Okay. You can buy this at the... No. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Hey. What do you call this? Shout it out. Mold. Mold. You know who you are? You're that. You and I, we're hot, melted wax. We take any form. Your soul, your character, your emotions, your intellect, your hot wax. What you need is what? You need a mold. You know what this mold is? Ask me what? Act as if. Magkunwarika. Act as if. And a day will... Oh, go ahead. Clap your hands. But a day will come. Everybody say, a day will come. A day will come. You don't need this anymore, right? Yes. You can just set it aside. Why? Because you've taken the form of the mold. So act as if you're the most patient person in the world. Act as if you're a multimillionaire. Act as if you're a prayerful person. Act as if you're the most loving person. Act as if you're the most generous person. And a day will come, you throw away the mold because you are that person. You won't anymore be acting as if. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Now, I know that some of you have brought stuff, objects, that will represent your five-year dreams, right? Your five-year dreams fulfilled. I want you to lift it up. I want you to lift them up now. Hallelujah. Some of these checks are donations to the ministry, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. These are, these, are, these are promises. This is, Lord, fulfill my dream. I want to I give some checks to you. Here's a brother. Jay, Jay is here. It says here he wants to give 8,000 pesos a week to the ministry. That, that's, that, that's his dream. Jay, come here. All of you have objects. Why don't you come here to the front? Come on, let's fill up this, this whole front. If you brought your, your fulfilled dreams, come in and face them. Face them. Come here. Face them. All of you, come on. Th those of you who have objects, come on. Come on. Let's come here. Let's... Yeah, let's, let's inspire people. Hey, what's that? Wow, my gosh. All right. There's a saint there, a picture of a saint. You want to be a saint. Amen. Oh my gosh, it's one million. One million pesos. Somebody wants to donate to the ministry. Okay. Yeah, show, 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 show people what your dreams are. Come on, show people what your dreams are. Amen. Yeah, all the way there. Sure, you fill up the stage. Fill up the stage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody has a clock. What's, what's a clock for? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Yes. All right. Lift up your dreams, everybody. Your novena to God's love. Lift it up. Let's pray together. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. you made me a dreamer. There must be a reason why. And so I'm going to use my power to dream to increase my capacity to receive your blessings. I now ask you to use me. Make me your hand. Make me your instrument. Hold me. Empower me. And bless me. Bless my future. 
Fulfill my dreams. Not for me, but for you, for your glory, and for the blessing of the nations. Use me to bless others. Make me a walking blessing. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I do ask you that you open the floodgates of heaven and pour upon them an avalanche of blessings. Resource upon resource, multiplied over, so that your people will have all the tools, will have all the weapons, will have all the resources needed in order to fulfill their dreams, the dreams that you have placed in their lives. Father, I pray, I pray for families that they become stronger. I pray for spiritual relationships with you that they become stronger. I pray for bodies, physical health that they become stronger. I pray, Father, for relationships that they become stronger. I pray, Father, for jobs and businesses that they become stronger. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hug someone beside you. Tell that person it will happen. Amen. Everybody say, get up. Pick up your mat. And walk. Some of you, you're still lying down on your mat. You've been there for 38 years. I don't know what that mat is, but you've got to get up, pick up your mat, and walk. You've got to leave whatever you're doing because God has wonderful things in your life in store for you. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.